Hi. Hola. Hi, everybody. Hola a todos. Muchas gracias por, por acompañarnos. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we're very excited today. And I think all the artists as well, I hope. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, I think we can start now. Uh, we already waited quite a couple minutes for everybody to join. So we're thrilled to present to you the opening and tour of uh, Spanic Art's first virtual exhibition, Now and Then, Tales of Immigration and Resiliency. Uh, today we have uh, with us some of the incredible artists featuring the exhibition, and we also will have the chance to hear from them and ask them questions uh, after. I'll go briefly about um, uh, some uh, Zoom etiquette uh, for today, just to uh, be able to pay uh, better attention to, to the artists. So in order to keep uh, the focus on the artists, we kindly ask you to mute your microphones and turn off your cameras while we talk, while they talk. Uh, por favor, este, apaguen sus micrófonos y su cámara cuando los artistas estén hablando uh, para poder este, mantener el foco en ellos y poder ver mejor su, su obra. Um, there would be also a time for uh, Q&A section uh, at the end, and I'll, I'll, I make, I'll make sure to let you know about this. Um, so uh, don't worry, we're going to have time to interact and chat and also to see everybody's faces, if you want. This opportunity to acknowledge the traditional territories of the people of the Treaty 7 region in southern Alberta, which includes the Blackfoot Confederacy, uh, compris comprising the Siksika, Picani, the Gaina First Nations, as well as the Sutina First Nation and the Stony Nakoda, including the Chiniki, Burspaw, and Wesley First Nations. The city of Calgary is also home to the Métis Nation of Alberta Region 3. Uh, finally, we would, like, we would also like to honor Mohkinstis, the traditional Blackfoot name of this place, which we call, now call the city of Calgary. Uh, we would also like to thank our partners, Arting uh, New Art Manifesto and the architecture firm Visual Bricks, uh, both from Mexico. Uh, and we will learn more about them uh, from uh, Armando Garles, uh, art manager and director of Arting, who's here with us today. Uh, we would also like to thank uh, Calgary Arts Development and the City of Calgary for supporting Hispanic Arts and this project. Uh, and also, but not least, uh, the Spanish Arts team uh, for all the hard work they put into this exhibition and uh, the artists. And thank you, everybody. Uh, this project wouldn't be possible without your support. Um, just to do some uh, introduction about uh, Spanish Arts, I present to you uh, Lili Sigie, Sigie, uh Vice President of Spanish Arts, uh, who's going to talk a little bit about our organization. Hello everyone. Well, thank you for being here. And just a little bit of a story and background of Spanish Cards. Spanish Cards was born as a dream, a dream to bring together Hispanic artists in a single place, in a community. Uh, the three Spanish Cards founders, Milena Vasquez, Freddy Rivas and I, after working together in some artistic projects, we realized that what we were looking for in the community was the same, to be recognized as professional artists in the land we now call home. But uh, that no matter our own efforts, it had been tough and difficult to achieve it. Therefore, we thought of creating community um, uh, through a nonprofit which could recognize and give a place to all those professional artists from Latin America living in Calgary that like us were looking for that community where they could be identified with heard and seen. So by September 2018, uh, we started from the scratch. We knew that it was the beginning of the path we decided to take over called the Spanish Arts an organization that gives support, creates a connection, facil facilitates resources, and provides a platform to Hispanic artists or artists that are inspired by the Hispanic culture to express their creativity with passion and contribute to the artistic growth of the city and their own communities. 
During these first three years, Hispanic Arts has created different programs, events, and exhibitions. In the visual arts, though, we have worked in community with different organizations, such as Casa Me Mexico Foundation, Esker, and Coming Soon, along with Arts Commons. And two exhibitions by Hispanic Arts. The first one was called Roots Raices on March 21, 2019. And this one, Now and Then, Tales of Immigration and Resiliency, which it is also our first virtual exhibition. The road has not been easy, but it will not be the same that the same without the enthusiasm, professionalism, and persistence of our board members, our Hispanic Arts members, and of course our community who has engaged with us even more during this last year. Thanks to all who are here tonight. Enjoy the exhibition and spread the word within your community. Be sure that as organization, we will ensure to accomplish our vision, which is to create a world where artists from all backgrounds inspired by the Hispanic culture are able to engage in our community, exhibit their artwork and gain recognition at the community at large. So thank you very much. Um, and well, enjoy this exhibition. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you very much, Lily. Uh, thank you. Uh, here is also with us uh, Armando Garles, uh, director of Arting New Art Manifesto, and we're very glad to to have you here. Bienvenido, Armando. Oli, hi everybody. I'm very happy to finally meet you. I'm really happy to see your faces and also your houses because pandemic and. I'm really excited to see all you here gather because um, I was really excited when we started making this project. Arting is a digital platform uh, dedicated to art management and promotion. And the purpose of Arting MX is to support new artistic practices while showcasing them national or in this case internationally. So with the use of technologies and virtual art shows we are very proud to finally gather some initiatives or artistic practices that we couldn't be able to join before. So in part, and thanks to pandemic, is that we can do these kind of exercises and we are really happy to see that we can have uh, spaces to show our work, whether we have a gallery, whether we are in Mexico, whether we are in Colombia, no matter where we are, I think, this is one of the best opportunities to finally meet you all. And especially when having such a, a strong curatorial process behind it, because I really liked every single artwork that I've seen so far. Well, no, not a spoilers, but I'm very happy to see you all. And I'm very excited to see what you have to say. Thank you for all your support and all your art process behind it and enjoy it. Muchas gracias, Armando, thank you. Um, so Freddie, our host is going to uh, start sharing the screen and the first pick at the virtual exhibition. So take us there. In the meantime, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about um, what all this exhibition is about. Thank you. Um, so now and then Tales of Immigration and Resiliency explores topics about immigration and identity, uh, specifically the resilient process of transformation that immigrants and, and their descendants have to endure in order to assimilate to a new context. Uh, the work of the artists is uh, very varied in its techniques and metaphors of representation of this situation. As you can see, we, can, uh, we have videos, sculptures, uh, painting, digital, um, digital works and photography and so many so many more um, uh, but the common aspect between uh, their art is the shared experience of the hispanic community in canada and the connection that we have with our roots um, and this connection is the axis for rediscovering ourselves and facing new challenges in these uncertain times um, i invite you all uh, to check out the curatorial text later and when you visit the exhibition on your own and you can check it uh, at your own pace you can see um, there's also music included and the all check all the interactivity buttons there so 
uh, without further ado, uh, let's know the artists. So we're gonna start uh, with the first video, uh, which is by uh, Jason Chang Aguilar. So please, uh, at this point, uh, mute your, video, your microphones and your uh, cameras, please. Hola, uh, my name is Jason Chan. Thank you so much, uh, Claudia, for the introduction. Um, thank you so much to Hispanic Arts for organizing this amazing event. I'm very happy and honored to be part of it and also to get to know all my colleagues and uh, well, Latin American artists in Calgary. Nice to meet you all. Um, yeah, I'm from Cuba, uh, so Cubana. And um, my main um, practice is focus on video art installation and new media. Uh, in the case of this specific um, video performance, uh, it's um, part of my current research uh, in the MFA program at the University of Calgary. Um, this video uh, called Los Artistas or the artists, it's, it's part of a um, project called Lost in Translation where I was exploring ideas of um, dislocation and translation um, regarding the migrant artist experience in this case with language. Um, for me, the duality between Spanish and English was a very, uh, let's just say complicated experience in terms of like my, most of my creative process happened in Spanish. So how an artist confront this, um, let's just say this dichotomies of these issues uh, from the creative process was kind of like uh, the main um, idea for this performance. So uh, the performance is basically confronting the words emigrante and migrant. And by the repetition and repetition of both uh, terms, it's like this, uh, let's just say, um, psychological process that happens in your brain. So in one point, it became so confusing that you don't know how to define one from the other, right? So I was trying to reflect how it happens the same in our brains when we're trying to create in another language that is not our mother language and uh, how we still have like deep inside us this um, uh, reflection to just automatically think in, in Spanish or our mother languages in this case. Or, uh, for me, um, I am really interested to see these experimentations and how um, they affect artistic creation. So um, yeah, those were kind of like my main motivations to do this artwork. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Cheng. Let's go to the next artist and our next artist is Freddy Rivas. So I am Freddy Rivas, a multidisciplinary artist from Colombia. I live in and work in Calgary uh, since uh, 2016. I finished my studies in the district university in the visual artist, performing arts and architecture design. While I was resident in Montreal, I was received of the Quebec government program Integrate of the Art 2013. Through, I installed a permanent public art title Entendu Drogabe I have been received a grant from Calgary Art Development in 2018 and 2020 to develop my ongoing project Highway 2. Also, I won in 2020 an uh, Elephant Artist Relief Award. My work has been uh, exhibited in diverse exhibitions in Quebec and Alberta. I have collaborated in 10 permanent public art pieces in Quebec. My work is based in a long thread and I focus on my pub and a public art. Currently, I am director of director and co-founder for Hispanic Cars. So I want to introduce my 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 piece called Pressure Suitcase um, from the series Immigrant Objects. This series talks about the, the object we refuse to live in our countries of the objects that keep us a unit for our culture and family in a uh, no verbal language for fear of arriving in foreign country. These objects become a kind of security and mental comfort 
that await as a immigrants is totally uncertain as we feel that we are traveling in an alien planet where you will find nothing to survive outside your home country. This yes. express what is called in Colombia pressure cooker. Uh, travel in the suitcase of the immigrant in an attempt to maintain the traditional and food. Maybe uh, hoping in the Colombian flower will persist in it, but the surprise, the food doesn't taste the same. Rice is not Colombian, it's Chinese, but the, here the papas is potatoes. And that you can easily find couple for cooking and traditional soap collect, for example, ajiaco, or how about tamales or tacos? Of course, you can cook, but never taste the same. Thank you so, thank you so much. Gracias, Freddy. Uh, seguimos con la obra de Felipe. Hello, I'm uh, Felipe Jasso uh, from Mexico, and I'm a visual artist, and I, I want to thank uh, Artin and Hispanic Arts for putting all this work together. This is my first virtual gallery and it looks pretty real and it looks really amazing. So thanks for that. Um, I guess um, I'm gonna talk about a little bit about um, this, this piece that your guys are seeing right now. And this is just one of the five uh, pieces of a series I did. And it it's a mix of um, ideas there, but the main one is is uh, it just did my experience of when I arrived to to this city, uh, which is like Canada, but I but I arrived to Calgary, and how um, how you your mindset start to change and uh, you 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 start to to your reality start to become some kind of memory. Um, of course, I'm putting there the the technology that uh, will play. Uh, you you know you cannot go to a place without taking a selfie, and that's what kind of makes a makes it real to for for like all of your friends and family. But but it's also it, it was about the clash of the culture coming from I'm, I'm guessing all Latin American cultures and coming into Calgary or Canada. Uh, there is a difference in 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 culture where we're like really noisy and we're like we're very sociable and and I, I feel like in Canada people are more reserved and so I wanted to put the individual with a big color there uh, and but also like the people at the back are more like in gray tones like they are more like settled but as well they're not looking at at the subject they're looking they're given the back. So it's also about the loss of identity. With time, you start to realize that your identity start to change. You, and, and suddenly you don't feel like you are from either place, like back home or even here. So for me, it was, or it's been um, such a place where I have to see who I am. And I try not to define it where, where I am right now. Um, but but it, yeah, it's it's about the struggles that I guess an immigrant goes when they leave home. They leave, and we still call home, right? And and it's hard to call this place home when all the memories from your childhood are back in 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 this example in Mexico. So yeah, it's a little bit of that the idea. It's it's a little bit mixed too. So but yeah, that's that's my work. Thanks. Muchas gracias, Felipe. Thank you very much. Uh, let's go to the next work. Um, this work is by Sergio Garcia Palma. Unfortunately, he couldn't join us today, uh, but I'm gonna talk to you uh, a little bit about this work. Um, it's titled La Parada. La Parada is a three-dimensional model of the house in which Sergio currently resides, with a surface that reflects gathered images of the area in front of his uh, bird home in Venezuela. 
It is a collage of elements either computer generated or of media found on the internet. A split presence in time and place that cannot be hidden by the normativity of the now or the boundaries of the physical body. Technology becomes an unsuccessful means to manipulate and overlap realities and to bind them in a digital presence. One, one placed and the other displaced. The binary fragmentation abruptly overlaps the recent and the past present. Uh, so this is what he has about his work. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can also uh, let us know at the end and we can uh, forward them to, to the artist. Uh, let's go to the next um, artwork, please. Uh, which is by uh, Paola Ramirez. Okay, um, hello everybody. Uh, thank you, Hispanic Arts and partnership to uh, leave us this, this opportunity to show our work. Um, I'm from Colombia. I graduate from the Alberta University of the Arts here in Calgary. And this uh, piece, um, I just want to recreate a scenario that I, I have faced since I leave my home country. Uh, in this video, I present myself as lost, uh, disturbed without an identity in the middle of, uh, of an open space. I just want to represent my experiences uh, of attachment to my culture and the detachment of my own culture. I just want to uh, put in, in, in this um, performance uh, what I had been dealing with the language, cost, custom, tradition, values, governmental and political system uh, and, and stereotypes. I feel like um, all immigrants uh, feel like uh, the Platon cave allegory, where the reality that we have is where we live until we uh, get up of the cave. Um, also, um, I feel that as an immigrant, I have the authority to talk about cultural identity um, thanks to the art, because art allows me to express my feelings, my, emo my emotions. Um, and through the art, I have to come to a point in my life which I have accept, accept my present while I'm still exploring my identity. Uh, therefore, in my practice, I find a, per a perfect opportunity to show my point of view from my life experiences as an individual. Um, I really love this quote from uh, Facundo Cabral. Uh, I'm gonna say in Spanish. No soy de aquí, no soy de allá. No tengo edad ni por venir. Y ser feliz el, es el color de identidad. I'm not from here. I'm not from there. I have neither age nor promising future. And I've been happy is the color of my identity. Thank you. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias, Paula. Um, I think your work is very powerful. Everybody's uh, work is very, very powerful. Thank uh, you. Let's continue with uh, Andres Porras' uh, video. Okay. Uh, hola a todos. Buenas tardes. Uh, I just want to start off by saying thank you to Spanic Arts for, for putting this together. For me, I, uh, I've been looking for a good place to display this work at. And uh, I'm really excited that it, it, it's finally kind of found a home. And uh, the, the virtual gallery looks uh, really, really good. So good work to everyone there on the Spanish Arts team. Um, this project is titled uh, Bucaramanga San Gil. And it's a project that came about from me taking a trip back to Colombia and uh, going to Bucaramanga where I was born with my fiance and taking a trip to San Gil and then seeing uh, the uh, situation with people being displaced from Venezuela, uh, kind of being confronted with it on the side of the road. Uh, what this kind of reminded me is that uh, people that were, uh, have grown up in Canada or uh, other North American countries might not have had 
you know, this crisis confronted, uh, you know, but wouldn't get to see this type of things. And uh, as a result, might have kind of preconceived notions about uh, what immigration is or why it's important to support immigration. And so um, it was with that that I uh, went and applied to the Alberta Foundation for the Arts and was able, was successful in receiving the grant uh, to create this piece. It's a, it's a docu-narrative, so it's, it's half documentary, half narrative. It doesn't really fit in each of those. And it's a mixture of digital uh, filmmaking techniques uh, as well as analog. So uh, this shot here that we're looking at, this is black and white Super 8 film. Uh, that we we use I, I used to capture uh, sections of the road uh, that uh, some people walk down, um, and then uh, this piece that you're seeing here, anything that's in color, uh, was done uh, digitally. And then what you're hearing is interviews, and you're hearing uh, you're seeing uh, shoes and bags, uh, but you're not seeing faces or uh, anything really super identifiable in there. Um, I think that one of the important things that I wanted to display in this piece is to remind people that have grown up in Canada, especially, that uh, they have a responsibility to their fellow human being and, uh, and just kind of uh, encourage them to reach out and do more research and uh, learn about something that they might not have uh, seen too much about. Thank you very much, Andres. And don't miss uh, his video. There's still uh, so more, uh, so much more in there. So please visit it um, when we share the link. So our Thank next, you. no worries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, our next artist artist is Anavi. Hello, my name is Ana Victoria Pinero, but uh, I sign as Anavi, and I'm I'm pretty happy to be here. Uh, really, guys, I just wanted to say that being part of this and being with you, everybody that is that make this happen, is a, it feels like a huge honor, and I'm, I'm grateful for it. Um, I am an artist from Venezuela, and right now I'm living in Calgary. Uh, in my work, focus on telling stories and feelings. And I do this through cartoons, illustration, and animation. And I want to talk about this piece called Resilience because I'm with this, with this calling, I, I made myself a big question and asked like, how do I feel being an immigrant? How does it feel? And um, where is home or what is home? And the answer or whatever came from that answer is this image. And I don't, I don't know where is home or what is home. It came with a lot of pain and anxiety and emptiness, but uh, also helped me to be in peace with not knowing really the answer. Um, and it's funny because I, I am far away and I know you can relate. I am far away from everything that used to be my identity, people that I love and everything that I grew up with. Yeah. But somehow if I close my eyes, I can get the sensation and the feeling that home is within me. And if it's with me and I can I take it everywhere I go, then I feel complete. So I feel like home is within me. And in that idea I find a lot of hope. Thank you. Uh, our next artist is uh, Ana Villanueva. Hi. Hello. Um, 
My name is Ana Paula Villanueva Diaz. Um, I am Mexican. Um, I immigrated to Calgary uh, in 2006, um, back when I was a, a kid. Um, and the way that I would maybe describe this work is it's, I would say it's kind of a part of a body of work that I am currently working on. Um, Xolotl by the Compras um, refers to the god or the demon Xolotl, um, whose story is quite tumultuous. Um, and I felt as though I relate to their story um, as I was kind of like an immigrant child. Um, and I was living with like undiagnosed mental illness um, associated with um, obsessive compulsive disorder and anxiety. Um, so then once I moved here, even just kind of being like an immigrant, um, just a kid, I just felt like a total weirdo and just didn't fit in. And I just haven't felt like I fit in for the longest time. So in this way, it's kind of been a manner of like kind of dealing with my demons. Um, so like there's a story that Shalot will um, didn't sacrifice themselves for um, the sun god. So they cried so much that their eyeballs fell out. <laughs> and I felt like, I don't know, there's, there's a lot of trauma in their story. And um, I like to embody this character um, as a way to kind of cope with trauma and, and just like mental health stuff, you know, being an immigrant child is quite tricky. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. And thanks so much for um, putting all of this together. Um, it's been really great. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Well, the exhibition and our next artist is uh, Evelyn Delgado. I think you can see me. I can't see myself. That's okay. All right. So I'm going to read this because it's long. So thank you so much to Svenic Arts and Arting. My name is Evelyn Delgado. I moved to Canada when I was nine from Costa Rica. The central focus of my art is normally about writing poems to robots. However, during the isolation of the COVID pandemic, I have been feeling really nostalgic about my childhood and how those events have shaped the person that I am today. So for this hand-drawn frame-by-frame animation, I wanted to use the idea of ice as a connective metaphor between my childhood in Costa Rica and my new home in Canada. I wanted to tell the story of the icy stairs the feeling of ice against my face and the many different ways that ice has made me ruminate on my past. Ice has been an isolating and enveloping presence throughout my life. And I found it very ironic that something so cold and it's such contrast to my warm past always brings back memories of my youth. I also wanted to evoke that fear that I felt about being seen as different. Um, I wanted to highlight also the erroneous confidence and how it would replay itself again and again throughout my life, partly because of my experience as an immigrant child, but also because I was a capricious child. Um, so I do invite all of you to visit the virtual gallery as we are currently missing the narration, which is it's actually kind of funny. So thank you so much. Thank you very much, Evelyn, and no worries. Uh, I'm extending the invitation again to just check out the exhibition after this uh, event and just check uh, Evelyn's video and everybody's work. Um, the, the narration of uh, the hardness of ice, it's very beautiful, so check it out. Our next artist is Aubrey Lopez. Are you there? Hi, I am here, sorry. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, my name is Avril Lopez. Um, I'm Mexican. I moved to Canada like five years ago. I did an MFA at the University of Calgary. And I also want to thank uh, Hispanic Arts for letting me be part of this amazing exhibition. Um, the reason why I make, made this painting is because I left Calgary to move to Windsor a year ago. And um, we arrived here just before the COVID-19 pandemic hit it, uh, affected Canada. So we're being struggling already in a third uh, lockdown and um, has been really hard, especially because I'm also working on my permanent residence uh, paperwork and it got stuck because also like uh, COVID affected all the process. And then I had like a really good artistic community in Calgary after my MFA. So suddenly moving to another place and feeling so isolated and then having so much fear of if I would be able to stay with my permanent residence and feeling my, missing my family so much and not having anyone around to support me in these really hard times. Um, I wanted to make this painting talking about how after so many lockdowns and the sense of isolation, you can feel that your own home feels like a, a prison, but at the same time, a shelter, especially as an immigrant where the language sometimes is a barrier and the culture itself. Uh, so I use dogs a lot in my work because I relate with the sense of having them around as a way of companionship, as in a way to like guidance uh, in Mexico. we. We have this if the belief that, especially Cholos Quinkles, that there were like dogs that they are from Mexico. They guided um, indigenous people to the to the other world. So I always thought that have that sense with dogs, and always had like Chihuahuas in my life since I was a kid. So I feel like I feel related with that sense of companionship and shelter, especially because <laughs> you know having family around having my, my dog from Mexico, I brought her a year ago. So I feel like sometimes she guides me. Um, also, I love using the sense of childlike aesthetics. Um, um, I felt really related with the artist that she was talking about her like in, uh, animation um, because I have also like a really traumatic uh, childhood. So I feel what through my art and through my own personal uh, iconography, I can heal myself and can I create my own memory and create my own childhood with, with my own rules that I think that's the powerful thing of image. And, um, and yeah, I just wanna create this like narrative, like imaginary piece where I can just share part of me. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Avril. That, that was great. And yeah, like uh, as Avril said, there's a lot of connections in between uh, the artwork, so check them out. Uh, there, it's great. Uh, our next artist is Natalie. Natalie Miller. Miller. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Natalie. Uh, first of all, I do want to say thank you to Hispanic Arts and Arting for um, allowing me to be part of this uh, wonderful exhibition. And to be and get to know every, all the other artists, this is really exciting to hear everyone's stories. Um, and I think there's so much that we'll be able to relate on. Um, so I'm currently pursuing my BFA at Alberta University of the Arts. And um, my practice has mostly focused, at least in the last couple of years, on the liminality or the space that my identity was born in, where it's somewhere between Salvadoran and Canadian. I am Canadian born, um, but I don't feel Canadian. And um, with my parents being immigrants, they uh, taught me the culture. That's what I grew up in, the Salvadoran culture, the foods, the music, everything. And, um, but at the same time, it was quite isolating because I didn't have anyone else. I, it's just my parents and I, uh, when I was younger, I had two sisters that came down the road. Um, so I was never really quite accepted as a Canadian, um, and I, but I also didn't feel full Salvadoran because I didn't have that larger community to be part of. Um, so this particular work, The Treachery, is inspired by uh, Renee Magritte's um, The Treachery of Images, 
where, you know, sometimes these titles that we use don't quite fit. And that's kind of, that's what I wanted to emphasize. Um, yeah, so I'm not quite Canadian and I'm not quite Salvadoran, I'm somewhere in between. And, uh, and one thing I wanted to add and just listening to everybody's stories is how um, interesting and that even if you're born here, not born here, a lot of the stories sound similar. And uh, so yeah, I'm super excited to get to know everybody. I'll put my social media on the chat and I would love to, to connect with everyone else as well. Thank you. Thank you, and for sure, uh, please, uh, to the artist, if you would like to share your uh, social media handle so uh, the people that is viewing uh, can check out your work, uh, that would be great. Uh, our next artist is uh, Janira Moncayo. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right as well. Hi, everybody. It's so nice to meet all of you. And thank you, Hispanic Arts and Art Team, for putting this exhibition together. I think especially the space looks so professional and so good. So it's something truly new to see, like a fully on virtual exhibition. And I also wanted to thank all of the artists that have spoken. I think the stories you have shared are, are things that really resonate closely to me. So particularly for this piece, um, what I wanted to focus on was sort of like how this lie gets built. Before we even arrive to Canada, there's this notion that as an immigrant, like you're rising up, like you're going up to the ranks when you leave your country and you get to go to a country abroad, like you're going up. But to me, that hierarchy establishes the fact that our nationality and our ethnicity are seen as inferior. So through this video, I wanted to explore how did that whole narrative start to build and the fact that it, even if it sounds so theoretical, like we see it to like all of the symbols throughout our life, whether it is to through television, to like pamphlets or like to stories our parents tell us about us. For example, like in this section of the video, something that really set up their hierarchy was seen like the university pamphlets talking about like the rankings and how prestigious it was to go to, go to university. And this video particularly was exploring how that idea of going up the ranks was essentially causing me to lose myself in the process and start to deny and almost like see my ethnicity in a negative way. And to me, it was really hard to come to that realization but putting it in this artwork allowed me to see it clearly and start to work towards healing those negative things that I had thought of. And that's my piece. And I wanted to thank Hispanic Arts for truly really giving us that space to explore all the complexity that goes with immigration. Thank you very much, Janira. And I think a lot of uh, immigrants and artists can relate to that as well. Um, it's interesting to see those connections between Evelyn's and, and, and yours. And I think uh, I invite you again to read the curatorial text because it also talks about this um, conflict with, with multiple um, identities and the hard work that represents to um, come to terms with both. Our next artist is Josefina Rodriguez. Hello everyone. I am so, so glad to be here, to be hearing everyone's stories. And as this show was, was, was taking form, as we were working on all the pieces, I. I've started feeling really emotional about how, how many things in common we all, we all have. So thank you so much for your participation. Uh, my name is Josefina Rodriguez. I am an Argentinian multidisciplinary artist. I have been living in Canada since 2010. And uh, I'm a 2021 graduate of the Alberta University of the Arts. I am also the secretary for Hispanic Arts and I'm very, very happy to be part of the team. Uh, my work is called Mestiza Queen. Uh, this, is a, this is a piece of work that I made um, in response to the struggle of reconciling my own identity as an indigenous immigrant woman. I think that there's a really big divide caused by colonialism in, uh, in South America. And I grew up in Argentina where there's a really a Eurocentric social fabric where everything that's European is seen as the, the ideal. 
And because of that, I never really felt connected at all with my indigenous roots and heritage. So I made this color, which is inspired by the Elizabethan uh, portrait paintings that I'm sure you've all seen because at least I grew up thinking that that was support, supposed to be what art looks like. And I made it as a way to reflect on all the things that were taken from South America, specifically the gold that was stolen from, Amer from South America, taken to Europe, and we were basically left with nothing but, but told that we should look up to European culture. So when I moved to Canada and I was asked who I was, and I started thinking about my, my identity as a South American, I questioned what was really South American and what was really that here European influence that we all were forced into. So I made this color using pretty much garbage. There's a toilet seat, there's coffee filters, there's a, a shower loofah and all these objects that I found around my house. And then I painted it gold to sort of uh, in, a, in a sarcastic way, I guess, question why, why is it that we look, we try to look that way. We try to look European in a way. So yeah, this is um, my piece once again. I would like to thank everyone for being here and I'm very proud to, to be part of the show. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Phil. Uh, we're very glad to have you in the team and in the exhibition. Um, our next artist is Josie Palacio. Hola a todos. Um, hope everybody's having is a good evening. Um, so this piece is called Heritage of Humanity, and it was actually a piece that was constructed last year um, during one of my research courses for school. And the trajectory of this research kind of was prompted by this question that was, um, that came to be like, what is the significance of being a Latinx artist in the Canadian landscape and their role as an artist in the space and habit? Um, as a second generation um, Canadian with Nicaraguense heritage, um, it's kind of that incomplete type of identity where, again, you're kind of representing your uh, Central American identity, but also you're born here in Canada and you're kind of struggling to find that wholesomeness of identity and what resonates best with you. So for this project, I actually, um, me and my older sister, Vanessa, we had gone to specific places where I felt a great connection, um, being that through my childhood home in Las Maricas Villas, um, growing up there with lots of other Latinos and how it was very much um, just like a great time and a great experience being surrounded by everybody. And kind of now that time has gone past, it's I had revisited that area and kind of things have changed. And it's kind of a little bit sad because revisiting, you kind of hope that there's that spark of, um, there's a nostalgia that's there. Um, and obviously like you no longer have it. And it kind of sparks my whole research question again. It's like, what is the significance of being uh, an artist in the Canadian landscape? And as an artist where I have all these locations that I wish I could visit again and feel that sense of like wholesome identity, what kind of new spaces can I create here in Calgary in my own uh, Canadian landscape? Um, and so the rest of them again is kind of the next one um, is go like quien causa tanta alegría. And it's again with that, it's connected to the religious aspect of being Latin American and how it's very prominent in our culture. Pero también it's very much, um, I'm not super religious, but at the same time, it, I still kind of fall in line with religious types of um, traditions because it feels good just to be connected to that. So yeah, I invite everybody to take a look at the virtual, virtual exhibition um, and really get a chance to look um, independently at each, um, each photo. All right, thank you. Thank you very much, Josie. And our next artist is, is uh, Lisette Febrero. Unfortunately, uh, Lisette couldn't uh, join us today due to uh, work, uh, but I'll tell you a little bit about this, this work. Um, it's titled Mother and Daughter and was created in a moment where the pandemic was a difficult time for the artist. Uh, in her own words, uh, as an immigrant, being without my family has sometimes emotional consequences. However, I am always keeping a positive outlook 
always trying to develop strategies to overcome adversities. One of these is the use of art as therapy. For me, family is the most important relationship throughout our lives, uh, since they are linked by strong emotional bonds. Uh, this work depicts these bonds between mother and daughter and shows the everlasting connection regardless of where they are. So please check the work out. I uh, hope we have another opportunity where we can uh, listen from the artist uh, and telling us a little bit more about, about her work. Uh, we can continue with our next artist who is uh, Julie Carvajal. Hi, Julie, are you there? Yes. Oh, awesome. So I was mute. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Julie Carvajal, and I'm a multidisciplinary artist and originally from Colombia. Very proud of that. And thank you, everyone, for this opportunity. So this piece of art, I made it just thinking at that moment with, when my visa was approved. So it, this is called rain of emotion because in that moment it's like when you feel like sadness, nostalgic, or you are also glad that you got that, but you had to leave your family. It's a now and then, because it's that moment that you had to think in the future and just pass that, that moment when you had to leave all your family. It's also that moment where all the dreams of emigrating are getting true. And this is where my face began to get wet with that tear. And it's just when a tear say more than a word. And it's because we are just losing uh, something that we had at home to gain more. And it's like with no pain, no gain but we are just uh, continuing the life and trying to get a better life in another place and also trying to get a new home. So this is a little part of that emotion that I felt at that moment. And thank you for everything. Thank you very much, Julie. And our next artist is Milena Vasquez. Um, hi, I am, I am so happy to be here and so grateful for everybody to put so much love into this. Uh, I know it was a very delicate subject for everybody and especially for me. <laughs> um, the subject that I chose is grief. Um, I'm an immigrant. I've been here in Canada for 18 years already. Um, I'm a photographer and I'm also a visual artist and the graphic designer for Hispanic Arts. Uh, I moved here because my sister moved here many years ago. She met a Canadian, a very handsome man in, in Bolivia and then they moved to Canada, to Edmonton. And they were super happy to be here. And my sister called me one day after a few years living here. And she said, you need to come to Canada. You're going to love it. So I follow her. And I live in Edmonton for three years uh, with her, helping her with the babies that she just had and a perfect life. And I start taking uh, courses in universities, uh, English courses, and start working. And that's when I my, met my husband. And, like a year later, I was married. Uh, two years later, I was with babies. And meanwhile, my sister was dealing with a lot of um, psychological problems, mental health, and um, I lost her. She, she actually died a few years ago. So my work is based mostly in the relationship that I have with her and I have her here. I don't know if I can put my camera on. No, I, I don't know why I can come put my camera, but it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, my, my work is based on, on, on the grief of the loss that I have for, of my loved ones, my sister, my dad, and uh, my uncle that passed away last year because of COVID. Um, I'm grieving right now. So what I do is like I use uh, art as a therapy 
I try to connect with my family in Bolivia and with uh, the, my lost ones through my art practice, through photography and through nature, actually. Uh, that's, that's the link that we have between all of uh, the members of my family. We love nature. My dad is a botanist and my sister was a gardener. My other sister is a, an orchid expert like my dad and we're all connected in that way. So uh, this is a piece that I, that I created last year um, in the fall for uh, the Day of the Dead when we were celebrating with Hispanic arts uh, in a beautiful celebration doing this amazing um, uh, table for our departed family members. And I created this, this piece of all the plants that my sister actually planted in my garden before she passed. And at, at the end of the fall, I have all these uh, leaves that, that I collected and I put it in a bowl uh, to put it in the offering, in, in the ceremonial table, in the, uh, in the altar that we do for our death. And yeah, this, this art piece actually was inspired by uh, uh, Rocio Graham's uh, botanical art piece that she was working at the time with dead nature. And I never worked with dead nature. I love flowers, I love botanicals. I always take taking pictures of flowers, but I never did dead flowers. But it was a very beautiful connection that I have with that because it was, uh, it, it was the, the life cycles at the end of the summer, at the end, like in the fall when everything was dead, like it was this sample. But now it's the spring and I am cherishing my, my sisters coming in all parts of my garden right now, like one plant here, one plant there. And, and I am full of joy that she's coming back. And yeah, that's, I don't know how to express this. It's very difficult. I'm trying to share with you what I feel, but yeah, I hope you understood what I, what I tried to say. Yes, thank you very much, Mille. Um, and thank you very much for sharing that. I, I imagine it's uh, very hard to, to talk about that. And um, I'm so sorry for your loss. Um, your piece is beautiful. And yeah, thank you. Our next artist is uh, Cecilia Nando. Hello everyone, my name is Cecilia Nando, I'm from Mexico, uh, I've been here in Calgary for 15 years and uh, acrylic art has brought me to a new path in my life and this painting is called Leaf, Leaf of Life, let's say, the color red is because this, the meaning of love, the meaning of uh, the blood that runs in our body and uh, how life runs around around us and uh, to try to find a way to keep living uh, and somehow I, I am a musician and with this pandemic I stopped uh, you know the shows and everything so it's kind of frustrating somehow my life become a little bit uh, sad so I was trying to find a way to do something else with me to find out what else am I able to? And this is how I invite everyone to never give up on you, to never stop looking in yourself. What else are you able to in your life? And um, I'm really surprised about all the, the, the things I've been creating. And this is one of them that I'm really happy to share with you guys. You guys are amazing. Your jobs are beautiful. Thank you, Spanish Arts, for having me with you today. And this is only the way to keep uh, living, to keep creating, and to let everyone know that we have something in us that can be important to others, to, to just let them know, never give up. There is something else in you that you can share with everyone. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Okay, uh, we're gonna go with the next artist in the meantime, and that is Ariadna Sly. So Ariadna also couldn't uh, join us uh, today, uh, but it's a, actually quite a nice connection with uh, Milena's work because her work also talks about grief. I'm gonna read uh, what she sent. It is in Spanish and at the end, I'm gonna make a quick uh, summary of, of the text. Cuando la resiliencia es la opción de vida después de la muerte. 
Mi obra está inspirada en una pérdida familiar a un año de haber inmigrado. El tópico de esta pintura es la resiliencia como la capacidad y fortaleza de transitar y superar situaciones extremas con empatía hacia la vida. La idea generadora de la obra es mostrar la unión entre los hermanos antes y después de la partida de uno de ellos, en donde esa unión y la resiliencia hizo que ellas superaran la ausencia de su hermano. Para lograr esa idea, elegí un formato cuadrado y lo represento con una composición axial, donde los rostros de los hermanos convergen en un centro, como representando una unión de almas. Ramos de flores entrelazan alrededor de los rostros, generando un espacio colorido y alegre de unión, a pesar de la partida de uno de ellos. Con las flores quise hacer una referencia a la muerte como un estado de nueva vida y florecimiento. Utilicé el collage para dar forma a flores y pájaros de colores saturados. Pinté los rostros de los hermanos al óleo en colores cálidos y el fondo en verdes a modo de césped, como contacto con la tierra y lo natural. Mi intención es mostrar la confianza en el fluir de la vida a pesar del dolor y que la unión entre hermanos es eterna. Expresar la resiliencia como la elección del amor a la vida después de la muerte. Wow. I don't know. I'm going to try uh, to translate this text. It is very beautiful and sad. Uh, but what Ariadna was trying to represent with her uh, work is um, the resiliency uh, that her family had to endure after her son died, after immigrating to Canada, um, and how art and the, the connection between uh, family members helped them uh, overcome the grief. Uh, the way she chose to represent the brothers is, uh, the siblings, sorry, is um, in an actual axial composition in which uh, how they converge into the center is uh, representing the union of their souls and how uh, those uh, bonds go beyond uh, life and death. Uh, flowers and the green uh, tones represent nature and how, um, after and that there's also this continue of life and blossoming. Uh, she says it in very beautiful words in Spanish. So I hope I did a justice to, to her work and her writing. So, okay, do we have my work there? So first of all, um, I'm Rocio Graham and I immigrated from um Mexico in 2002 into Canada and like everybody else I had to you know adjust yes Felipe just said like three minutes <laughs> I promise you I'll be three minutes so you know I'm very inspired by the work that everybody's doing here um like everybody else I had to challenge my identity and I had to renegotiate a way of being. And for the longest time since um, I immigrated to Canada, most of my work has been um, botanical work as a way of mediating um, the severe childhood trauma and the mental illness uh, struggles that I have in my, in my life. Um, I didn't want to be in front of the camera uh, if it was, it was very difficult for me to see myself in my work and to show my face. So for the most part in my photographic work, I felt like I was hiding and speaking about things that they were very too difficult for me to speak about. Um, and so the botanical work was a way of mediating with that grief and the pain and um, you know the stories of trauma. But in the last year, um, I think a lot of us had to go through a lot of reckoning and we had to really um, challenge how we were presenting ourselves and how we were connecting with the world. So for me, 2020 was very cathartic because um, I had to finally come to terms with my identity as you know, biracial, um, coming from a family who half of it is very 
Catholic and the other half is, is very pagan for lack of a better word, you know, with indigenous knowledge. Um, you know, I grew up with an abuela who, you know, is curandera um, and then a mother who uh, became extremely um, religious. So I had all this tension um, and I had to reconcile my identity. And in 2020, I started doing work that start to show that complexity of that identity as a botanical artist, but where was that coming from? You know, that connection to the land um, with indigenous knowledge, but also, uh, you know, the remnants of Catholicism um, and, and, and this new connection to this new place that I call home, which is, you know, Canada. So, you know, like it was very, audacious of me to start showing myself in my work but I think it was a way of reclaiming uh it was a way of of feeling whole and um really go out of my comfort zone and start myself as 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 that complexity of of emotions and 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 backgrounds and ways of being so anyway, that's all about me uh, and the work, the, what inspired this work, this video that is called Awaken. And it was a reflection of the pandemic. And I just wanna say thank you so much for uh, allowing me to be part of this project. Um, sorry that I'm a hot mess today. <laughs> I'm in the middle of trying to set up Santa Rosa and it's a little bit kind of crazy um, over here, but um, I am so inspired by each of you and your stories and they're so powerful and thank you for sharing that. Thank you very much, Rosie. I'm looking forward to, to hear about your, your project. So you're welcome, you're welcome to turn on your cameras. Let's chat. Uh, Anybody has any questions for the artist? Ah, okay. Puedo pedirte un favor. No sé por qué dice que el host me ha bloqueado mi cámara. <laughs> y hace rato que quiero. Ay, God, I can't find it. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, let's see, Andrés has a question. Yes, yes. Sí, eh, yo tengo una pregunta. Qué pena, no me acuerdo el, el nombre. Oh, sorry, sure, I should say this in English, shouldn't I? Um, pero eh, the, el artista, el artista de... de I'm sorry. Um, the artist that had the the wonderful hand drawn thing. Uh, you were talking about being isolated. Um, I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of the piece, but I'm just wondering if you can uh, talk a little bit about the process of uh, the actual process of uh, doing a hand drawn animation. I think you're talking about me, although there were some a few of us who had line drawn. So it's basically yeah. just take a drawing. And then do another one until you have yeah. 20,000 drawings and then you put them together. So I do a lot of rotoscoping. So I'll take videos of myself and I'll draw those um, as animations. And then for this one, I used some of my actual photographs that we had as kids. And I would draw them over and over so that those differences between one frame and the other, I would make it look like they're moving, even though it's a still photograph. That's great. Thanks for thanks for sharing. Sorry, I didn't have my specifics there, but I, I it did stand out to me, and I and I really enjoyed it. So thanks. Thank you. I saw your media video, and it was amazing. And I'm moving to Calgary in like a month, so maybe we should collab soon. <laughs> That's awesome. That's what all these events and Spanish arts is for: just creating sparking connections. Uh, between artists from from the community, so that's great. Creo que es hora de que empiece la fiesta, muchachos. Ya suficiente. Hermosa terapia. Hermosa terapia. El poder compartir y escuchar todas las historias. Qué hermoso. Espero que todos estén así tan cómodos como para seguir y que sea más grande que eso, chicos. No, gracias a ustedes, Spanish Arts, por, para de darnos esta oportunidad. Yo soy muy nueva en esto. Yo apenas descubrí el arte el año pasado, porque aparte de la música, pues, se queda como un vacío. 
y empiezas a descubrir cosas nuevas, ¿no? Entonces el, el arte, el fluid art para mí fue algo interesante y al empezar a trabajar con diferentes formas de arte fue muy divertido y mantiene mi mente ocupada. Yo creo que es la, la mejor forma de salir de esta realidad tan complicada para todo y el compartirlo con todos ustedes, la verdad que, que me llena de, de mucha alegría. Gracias por dejarme mostrar. Thank you. Just to, uh, for the uh, English speaking uh, people that is uh, in the meeting, uh, just uh, thanking everybody and uh, talking about this uh, space for sharing these stories. Uh, please let us know if you have any questions. You have your uh, glass. Hi. Yeah, go ahead. Well, uh, thank you very much for first for the invitation to be part of uh, this virtual opening event. It was amazing the, to see the works of all the artists participating. Congratulations to Hispanic Arts and, and to all the board and to all the artists that uh, I think I believe a, a lot in the community and, and it's great to see. I look forward to see the exhibition with more detail. You go to the, go to the link and, and to see more detail, but congratulations to all. By Miguel Cortines, by the fact, and, and thank you very much. Gracias, Miguel. Thank you, Miguel. Miguel from Casa Mexico. Thank you. Anybody has any other questions? It's your chance to uh, learn all about their processes, uh, what other kind of work they do. Come on, don't be shy. I don't have a question, but I would love to hear what you guys thought about the exhibition in general and, and the work that you saw in other, like if you can relate to the work of other people. I think I feel really like excited and touched and moved about all the artwork that I've seen. Um, because we created like a really like strong, like only one conversation. I think a lot of the work is actually sharing the same feelings and, and emotions, especially right now with COVID. Um, And it's interesting, like we feel so isolated, but when you start sharing with other people that have the same emotions and thoughts, you feel less alone. So, and it's also really important to open these conversations um, because there's not a lot of art shows like this. So I think it's another, a great opportunity to start creating more of this kind of like information, art spaces, especially using like, intera like interactivity and virtual reality. Especially having Armando, that is his like project is amazing, and um, I'm sure there could be like more projects in the future with him and Hispanic Arts. Uh, thank you so much. It was really, really amazing. Thank you for sharing, Abel. Um, you go ahead, Armando. Oh, you go. <laughs> hey, again, I will do my best speaking English. Show. Um. Um, me um, being the manager, the art manager, and me trying to understand the whole exhibition, seeing each and one, one and ah, fuck. <laughs> oh, am I am getting nervous if you're not standing in front of me anyway? I'm really happy to see you all because of course, when I was, when we and my team were making this exhibition in, within the technical process behind of it, uh, I was really touched by every single artwork when, I, when we were doing this. And now that I've seen so many faces, I didn't know where you came from. So now it's very interesting to see if, people from Mexico, Colombia, Bolivia, Argentina. I think it's amazing. I remember me, I remember uh, chatting with all the boys and the girls in, in, in the office, like, oh, have you seen this, this work? Oh my goodness, yeah. And, and I was really surprised because last year we had the chance to work with Hispanic cars as well, or with a different project now. I was, back then I was like, oh, that's really nice to, to make a community of people that speak Spanish in Canada. But now that I'm seeing 
this this exhibition is is really touchy. It's really important to have these spaces and make art and make love and to showcase talent and social issues and different perspectives that normally you couldn't see regularly in museums or galleries back there in, in not, not only in, in Canada, like from your perspective, but also in Mexico, you know? We, al we always have this like, we never acknowledge our culture, but when you are far, far, far from there. So it was really a pleasure to meet you all and such a great opportunity. Thank you very much for all the team, for all the support, for all the patience <laughs> behind the process. And I'm really happy to see the result. Thank you very much, Armando. I think, yeah, we feel the same. We're very glad uh, we could uh, do this collaboration with Arding. And yeah, excited to see more projects coming <laughs> together. Yeah, I am so happy to see the new artists. We are growing up many for the two years and we have more and more artists who speak Spanish, who is uh, linking with the Spanish, who is inspired by, by, by Spanish culture. And I'm so happy to, to see a, a new ones. Uh, in this moment, we are um, this team, the artist who is in, involved in, in this exhibition is uh, 20, 20 artists plus the other ex exhibition we are commons there are uh, 20 23 artists so we are 43 artists involved in spanish cars and so happy to see everyone and thank you so much for for joining us uh as spanish arts i'm so happy happy and thank you armando for this exhibition you are amazing your team is so so good and also i want to say um uh, all my, uh, our team of the Spanish cars to work behind the, the, the scenes for everyone. Uh, uh, Ho, Claudia, Maya, uh, Milena, Lily, me and the volunteers, Asa Diana, um, Sandra, who helped to be all involved. So thank you so much, everybody. And thank you for joining the, the, the other people and Calgary Art Developments for for this opportunity for uh, immigrants artists in, in Alberta. Yeah, thank you everybody for um, their amazing, your amazing work. It was super inspiring uh, seeing everything that you have to, ch to share. Uh, it's just some of them I'm like all about to cry and uh, it's just, get you connected to where we are coming from. And um, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Armando and Spani Cards for putting, uh, Arting and Spani Cards putting all this together and all the team. Um, it's just really cool to see all these artists coming together, uh, sharing it with the world because it just takes that little bit of us to share it out there with the world. So thanks. Okay. Next. <laughs> and I, I want to touch upon something that Avril mentioned that I think is really important because over the past almost two years, there's been a lot of talk about BIPOC people and the inclusion of BIPOC artists, especially in the Calgary community. And I want to, I want to say how important I think it is to be creating the spaces to showcase our art. We're not just talking about it. I think it's important to actually act on it and create the spaces that we need to show our art. And we are here for you to, what, for whatever you need, basically. This is what we wanna do is we wanna open the doors and we wanna work with you, whatever it takes to make all of our work known and seen and heard because I think that is the most important thing we can do uh, as a community. And that's why we are a community and we want you to be involved. Just reach out to us, text us, email, Instagram, anything. We are waiting for your, for your ideas. We, wanna, we want to see what we can do next all together. So please don't be shy and get in touch. Just contact any of us. 
We're looking for volunteers. That's what I meant to say. We're looking for volunteers. We need more people here. Come on. La próxima vez será en grupo con vino. Yeah, we should have uh, mentioned that at the beginning. Just bring your own booze today. <laughs> Let's enjoy the, the opening. <laughs> I'm going to party right now. Okay, I, <laughs> my I, next mission after this phone call, I'm, I'm going straight. Salud, salud. <laughs> I think of you guys. <laughs> Salud, everybody. I think it was beautiful, beautiful Salud. listening and hearing all these uh, amazing stories, visual stories, sonorous stories. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. I know. So I'm so happy for the artist who is the first time to make exhibition as a uh, sexy, sexy, se Cecilia. Sexy. <laughs> it's, the, it's, the, it's the first time to, to do that. And so that's now nah, that's for that reason that as I mentioned. Uh, Ho is we we are for for that for for engage for encourage you to be part of the artist community. So I I, I forget to to mention it. April is is in Toronto. So there are many many places here on on this exhibition. Yeah, I want. Uh, I also want to. I already say thanks to all. But I also recognize, I want to recognize the, the work of Arting. It has been a great partnership we, we discovered together. Um, and I also want to recognize my, my partners in crime, all um, the board members. Um, to be honest, they were like the ones engaged in this ex exhibition. Um, it has been a hard work for everyone. Um, so thanks all you guys all my, my partners in crime. Um, and I wish I, we could do another exhibition next year, maybe a second part of this excellent theme, because as you say, as you, as you see, um, it's not like immigration and resiliency, it can be, uh, it can be take touch or can be taken from any perspective, from many perspectives. So um, if there is a second part of this, of this exhibition, I'm, I, I will definitely participate on it. Um, so yeah, the same, join us, join us as a members as well. Uh, if you like the work, if you like uh, the connections what you have done, uh, I invite you to, to join us as a members and find out what uh, you can have uh, if you are part of our team, if you're part of a our memberships. Um, and I also want to thank uh, all the organizations who have been uh, beside this ex exhibition uh, supporting us. So CADA and, and well, all the, all the, the ESCAR and all the or organizations that can ha have given us this um, maybe not, well, support economically, yes, but also um, in terms of uh, Consejos, uh, uh, suggestions, no, um, and visions, point of views, no. So all that is is very important for to us. So thank you guys and congratulations again. And yes, cheers, cheers with anything, yes. wine or beer, or coffee. <laughs> yes, cheers. Okay. I, I would like to uh, ask if somebody wants wants to have anything to say to invite anybody who had to contribute with a little bit or whatever Me, you please, please. I just want I just want to say something from my perspective my, my point of view my experiences I just want to thanks uh, again to everybody but uh, uh, as an artist as an immigrant I feel all of us are, uh, we are really brave because it's not easy being an artist and um, being an Im immigrant, especially, I don't know, I ask you, do you feel better if you speak Spanish here? Of course, right? Yeah. And what are we are doing? We are speaking English. Oh my God, it's, no, it's not, it's not like my identity. It's kind of weird, but I understand we are in, in Canada, is the first language, so we adapt. So I just want to clap to, to Hispanic arts and the partnerships for, for this amazing job and opportunity. And I, this is my first time um, 
uh, ex exhibiting uh, my my work with you. So I just want to continue, and I'm here wherever you need and want, and I just want to support. Thank you. Thank you. Así que puedes ayudarnos con mil dólares, tranquilo, cada uno. <laughs> Can I can I say something very quickly? I have to go. Yeah, go Congratulations. Ahead, go ahead. Congratulations again to everybody. And I just want to invite you. We are hosting the fourth edition of the Latin American Art Festival. It's going to be in September, September and October. And we are having the call for artists right now. It's in the website of Casa Mexico, casamexico.ca. And hopefully to see some of you working or all of you uh, participating in that. You some of you already participate and and yeah, we are very, very honored to be working with, with our community. And, and thank you very, very much to Hispanic Arts for the partnership that we have for many years as well. And I have to go, but congratulations to all. Thank you. Very thank, much. You. thank you. Thank you, thank you Miguel, Miguel, for being here. And yeah, check, check the open call from Casa Mexico. Yes. Where, when the baby is coming, Lily? Is, the baby is here. It's here already. already. <laughs> Oh my God, I haven't, I haven't seen it. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a COVID baby. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I'm going thank to, you. Going, hopefully we can meet too, soon. Yeah. Thank you. Have a, have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thank you. Anybody else who has anything to add to the conversation? Anybody thoughts? Eh, Jose Palacio tiene pregunta. Um, yeah, I wanted to say like a big thank you uh, for giving me the opportunity, as you mentioned before. Um, yeah, like this, this is my first time showcasing work to um, even in like the virtual reality type of experience, which is like another kind of cool feature. Um, and also también, like there's not much uh, Nicaragüense type of representation. Um, so it's like really thank you again for that. And yeah, it's also while we see there's a lot of like immigrants showing their works, and like, again, like the, the main themes of identity that are shared amongst all of our works. It is nice to hear other uh, Latinos who are either first born or second uh, generation and to hear everybody's stories as well and how we're very much still united. So, yeah. Thank you very much. And yeah, like I completely agree with that. And I think uh, just check, I, I'm saying it again, check out the, the artist statement. I think it, uh, encompasses a lot of these topics that we're talking about and for sure uh, immigrants and uh, the descendants of immigrants uh, we all experience uh, similar situations and just this reconnection with the roots it's just help I, I think it's helping us heal um, a lot of uh, stuff <laughs> the grief uh, uh, sometimes uh, difficult situations and um, and just like as uh, some of the artists mentioned like all this going through the, all these immigration processes as well because it's a really hard toll and like emotionally so yeah I'm really glad to to see everybody's work and listen to your talks it was very in interesting and enriching. I feel I feel less like an alien Thank to you guys. I feel more human today. So thank you. That's awesome. So smile, everybody. Una sonrisa. Everybody. <laughs> so we will share this video on YouTube and our... Uh, sorry, Freddie. I think Natalie wants to say something. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I... <laughs> No, don't be sorry. I'm sorry. I should have maybe said something earlier, but Claudia had something she just said that uh, just resonated with me about um, just feeling or hearing everybody's stories and feeling seen, feeling heard. Uh, and one thing I really did want to add about, and this is directed to Hispanic arts, is representation matters. And I think you guys are doing a wonderful job of that. I think you know, growing up or even being in school for the last few years, I haven't really seen um, Latinos like out there in the, you know, the higher ranks of the art community and, you know, it only takes one organization to change that. And just uh, when I started to search, you know, Latinos in Calgary, I actually searched that and this came up and it was really exciting to see something already existed. Uh, so I'm grateful and I am blessed to be part of it. Thank you. And I really hope, yeah, I look forward to, 
to doing a lot more. And regarding collaborations, I love collaborations because I love learning. So anyone who's interested, please yeah, reach out. Okay, I see you, Joe. All right. <laughs> Paola, so thank you again. And for sure, if you want to like uh, collaborate, we can, I think I'm speaking for, but I don't know. Uh, just reach out to us, even if you have like any questions or uh, you need like any kind of support, we can just uh, try to help you as best as we can. So yeah, don't don't hesitate. You can uh, just reach us through our social media, through our email. Um, I'm gonna share them in the in the in the chat. Um, so yeah, just don't if hesitate. You, just reach if out. You guys can share um, your social media handle in the chat. That will be awesome. So everybody can just go and check out more of your work or who you are. That will be awesome. And anytime you have a, something to share, like an, uh, an artwork or something, uh, just tag us and we, and we will be happy to, to share all those works in our social media as well. Yes, uh, we also have a newsletter each month and, if, and we usually uh, feature work of one of our artists. So if you want to be featured in our artists and you know your work will be seen by other people. So just email, uh, send us an email with your image or if you have exhibitions or anything coming up, just let us know and we will, we will be happy to share that. Hashtag Hispanic Arts. <laughs> Okay, so don't forget to join us at the, uh, the exhibition is already happened in the Art Commons. You can see the exhibition in our page, the Spanish cars, and you can see the, the, the other exhibition we, we have. It. It's online too, uh, yeah. And we invite so, you also to Desayunarte. Hmm, Freddy, yes. give the announce. Of course, Claudia, go ahead. <laughs> I think the best thing is to invite everybody to all the activities that is going on with Hispanic Cars is going to the website. It's, everything is there, just yeah. with clicks and links and everything. Go there, hispanicarts.com, and everything that you guys need to know in order to connect with everything is there. And also, well, a uh, shout out, shout, shout out, shout out. <laughs> Sorry about, uh, about the Desayunarte because Armando is going to be featured uh, along with Toyin. Uh, Oladel from uh, the Immigrant Council for Arts Innovation. So it's going to be on the 29th of May at 10 a.m. So grab some tea, some coffee, and something to have your breakfast while you listen to art. Uh, so that's what Desayunarte means, it's breakfast and art. Uh, so join uh, Armando Antoyin and the uh, Spanish Arts team, because uh, they're going to be talking about all the work that goes uh, behind the scenes uh, on creating um, artistic and cultural projects. So don't miss it, it's going to be really great. And Lily Sihe is going to be your host. So, yay. So, yeah. Bueno, creo que no, no tenemos más preguntas del público. We don't have more questions. <laughs> Of the public, Rocio, do you want to say something? I don't know, Rocio always has something to say, come on. Rocio, <laughs> sí, no. say something. No, no, ya, no, ya me dijo Felipe que, que me tranquiliza. <laughs> no, es cierto. Go ahead. No, dice, ya, me, me empiezas con tu, con tu habladero. Dice, no, está bien, no, eso es pura broma. No, la verdad es que eh, me encanta este, escuchar el trabajo de, de, de todos. Siento que todos estamos haciendo un, un, un esfuerzo común, ¿no? Compartimos nuestras historias, compartimos nuestra, nuestra jornada, que es muy similar. Eh, como dice, ¿no? Es el, es el mismo culé, pero de diferente sabor. Y es... <risa> y es, es este... La verdad es que es, es, es fenomenal. Y, 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 y ver Hispanic Arts, que en tan poco tiempo ha crecido y ha obtenido una reputación, obviamente, por el, el trabajo tan sincero y tan honesto, ¿no? Eh, a través de los últimos, ¿qué será? Año y medio, año que los he estado conociendo, ha sido, ha sido bastante inspirador verlos crecer y verlos este, 
cómo han trabajado tan fuerte por, por nuestra comunidad, ¿no? Y como decían antes, es, este, nos toca a todos eh, apoyarnos el unos a los otros porque así es como nuestra voz es más fuerte. En la unidad podemos tener una voz más fuerte y la verdad es que estoy súper fascinada de, de ver el trabajo que se está haciendo. Y bueno, a ver, este, aquí estoy este, esperándolos a ver cuándo ya se nos hace este, para, pues, pues, para hacer un retiro por aquí. No, no es espiritual, ¿verdad? No. Sí, es espiritual, pero no es religioso, acuérdate. <risa> Aquí estamos en, este, en Christina Lake. Este, aquí tienen su casa, ya saben. Estamos este, ahorita estableciendo todo. Eh, pero bueno, hay mucho monte y, y, hay, y hay mucho este, lugar para poner el tent. Así que por ese lado no se, no, no se, no se mortifiquen. Este, viene contento y con, y con, y con osito también. Paula <ríe> pregunta que dónde es, Rocío, tu lugar. Es, es, es Santa Rosa Arts and Healing, es un, un lugar precisamente de inclusivity que estoy empezando y, y está en Christina Lake en British Columbia, está como a dos horas de Colona y a una hora de Casagar. Este, pero pues de que llegan en carro, llegan. <ríe> Yo también quería aumentar porque estábamos pensando con Maya eh, ir a verte y si podemos llevar a un grupo de artistas que quieren ir a pasar un fin de semana en, en tu finca, en tu granja, en tu art center. Claro, claro, pues esa es la idea. Pues. Uh, a veces es no estamos queriendo hacer ese viaje hermoso. Claro, es, es, es precisamente, es este, como les digo, ¿no? O sea... Me aventé un buen, un buen de tiempo en, 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 el, en el mundo del arte en, 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 en Canadá y la verdad es que sí, esto fue inspirado precisamente por eso, ¿no? Crear un lugar, un espacio, pues ahora sí que para todos es, es algo complejo porque es este multi, multi, multidisciplinario, pero poco a poco, ¿no? Los sueños así empiezan. Y, y yo siento que el que quiera hacer su workshop o lo que sea, pues avísenme y aquí tienen un espacio, el, 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 el estudio, les voy a dar un medio, un, 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 bueno, luego les doy un tour, pero este, ya ahí va más o menos el estudio estableciéndose y especialmente para la persona, a las, los artistas que están interesados en hacer trabajo botánico con la naturaleza, eh, aquí es. No, o sea, ya saben que las tenemos súper invitados. Y pues un, un, un abrazo y un beso para todos. Que se la Gracias, pasen Rocío. muy bonito. Gracias. Ok. Creo que ya casi son las siete, entonces vamos a llegar. No, sigamos. <risa> Entonces yo creo que para está, la... Milena. Sí, está uh, Freddy, can you stop the recording? Yes. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye, bye, everybody. Adiós. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.